Hey everybody, I'm Rob Hill with Total Wine and More, and I'm here with Dan Gordon. And Dan, you are the Gordon of Gordon Beers Brewing Company, right? Indeed. And now you all were founded in 1987, and you brewed and sold your first beer in 1988. So you've been around for a while. Yes, yeah, so I've dedicated my whole life, so to speak, to, uh, to brewing beer. Now, in the world of craft beers, uh, it seems to be predominated by ales, typically, but you brew lagers. Tell us a little bit about your background and how you came to brew lagers. Sure, I uh, was an exchange student uh, when I went to Cal undergrad and saw that you could study brewing engineering, and I applied to go to the Technical University of Munich at Wein Stefan and ended up doing a four and a half year intensive brewing engineering program there. Uh, bought brewing machinery while I was actually in school, wrote the business plan for Gordon Biersch, met Dean Biersch uh, about two thirds of the way through and then decided to, to open up our first uh, brewery restaurant in Palo Alto, dedicating ourselves towards brewing authentic German style beers. So you really took the cue from your training and decided to bring it overseas. Absolutely. So now there's a lot of talk about the Reinheitsgebot and obviously by hence to fun, adheres to that. Yeah, I adapted that culture and, and dedication in doing it. There's some good reasons for the Reinheitsgebot. One is it's, it says four ingredients, malt, hops, water, and yeast. And it did it uh, back in 1516 because he had the witch's brew mentality going on where by there was branches, cow bile being used to, to flavor the beers. And they said hops are the only way to go. And cow then, bile? Cow bile, yeah. Okay. That, was actually that doesn't sound very appetizing. Not, not delicious at all. <laughs> so that, that is a good underlying process. And then it got refined a little more uh, to the fourth ingredient, which was yeast, because they didn't know about yeast until you know, Louis Pasteur discovered it. And then uh, we've done it to the nth degree, uh, to the point where we import all of our raw materials, sourcing them from around the world to get the very best. So I buy a lot of malt uh, from Bomberg, Germany. Our hops come from the Hollertau and Tetning regions down in, uh, in southern Germany. And, uh, all the noble hops? All the noble hops, the good stuff is mm -hmm. what we say. And they, they're roughly five times more expensive than domestic hops. And there's a reason for it. They give this pinpoint fine bitterness and delicious aroma. So Dan, you use, as you say, uh, primarily or 100% German malt and noble Bavarian hop. You really don't spare any expense, do you? Now, what I'm trying to do is recreate the German heritage and brewing experience, but with the beer being extraordinarily fresh. Now, I, I see some, uh, some different things here. Um, we, I see some large bottles here. This represents your special release. Yeah, a limited release program is something I've been dying to do. One-off beers, uh, we basically do one tank. Uh, it's something that is very hard to get. For instance, the, one of the beers that we just released, the Weizen Eisbach, there's only two, another, one other brewery in the world that's ever done this style. And I want to be a, you know, cutting edge, and that's what everyone's asking for, is something unique, and, uh, and I make sure that's possible. So there's Eisbach, which is rare in of itself, but then a wheat Eisbach. Weizen Eisbach, yeah. That's, that's an extraordinarily unique beer. Only yeah. us and Schneider are brewing that. And that must be expensive to brew. Ridiculously expensive. We actually uh, end up tossing the equivalent of 75% of uh, every batch that we produce just because it's so concentrated. So we only use the first running. It's the equivalent of the first press in olive oil. So the first running of, uh, of the, from the louder ton is all we can get because it's got to be extraordinarily high concentration, which is around 24% uh, original gravity or the sugar concentration before fermentation. So also on the table here, we have this big glass boot. Tell us a little bit about this. Stiefel. This is one of the uh, drinking traditions I was uh, exposed to when I was uh, going to grad school at the, at the Technical University of Munich. It's a communal drinking vessel. You rarely drink it by yourself. It holds two liters of beer. It uh, dates back to uh, the 1500s when the German fraternities used to do dueling sword fights to resolve their, their differences. And uh, uh, at the end, the two fraternities would get together and the two sword fighting dueling um, members would actually drink out of their own boot take off their, their shoes. And imagine back then, people only had one, one pair of boots. A lot of times they didn't wear socks. Yeah. So it was pretty rank. Yeah. Um, the, the glass blowers decided to do the facsimile of, uh, of the actual boot. And it became a tradition amongst the fraternities. And uh, it's passed around. There are all kinds of rules. If you can lay it over on two fingers when you're passing around and it doesn't pour out, you have to chug the remainder. And uh, that's roughly a half liter. But the whole boot holds two liters of beer. So you actually fill it up. Oh yeah, there's a calibrated fill line right here for the two-liter mark. Wow. So you have full instructions on your website as uh, bootology? Yeah, and you can even order one on our website if you want to have your own personal boot. So gordonbeers.com, yeah. bootology. Oh yeah. You'll find how to do it. Exactly. That sounds interesting. I haven't done it before. Maybe you and I can... Well, uh, this could be part of our demonstration video here okay, today. That's, yeah. That sounds good. So Dan, we mentioned briefly uh, these big bottles, which are your limited release. It's a new program. 
Uh, of course, we have these 12 ounce bottles, which represent your year round beers. How many year round beers do you have and which, what are they? Well, conveniently, you can get all of our beers at Total Wine & More. Uh, our flagship is our Meritzen. Uh, then we have our Czech style Pilsner, Blonbach, and our Hefeweizen. And we do every uh, quarter, we have a different seasonal uh, specialty beer along with our limited release. They all come in six packs. Yeah, we have six packs, uh, 12 packs, and then a variety pack of 12, 12 beers too. So you always get the Meritzen, the Blonbach, the Pilsner, plus one of our seasonal beers. And then for folks who uh, haven't tried them yet, maybe want to try them uh, one at a time, you can buy them in singles. That's pretty store. neat. Total Wine & More has that, that, that ability for us too. So you brew several variations of Bach. Tell us about that. Well, Bach beers are uh, known for being the, the beers that the monks originally brewed. And the history behind it is they brew it darker and stronger to overcome Lent, where they were re relegated to having a bread and water diet. Uh, the Winter Bach, which is our, one of our seasonal beers, is actually that style of beer that the monks uh, traditionally brew. It's, it's actually brewed year-round by a lot of the monastery breweries. It's our winter seasonal. It's a strong double Bach, meaning it's uh, brewed with dark roasted malt. Uh, it has Munich malt, caramelized Munich malt, and then uh, uh, a black malt that gives it that, uh, that dark, rich color. But it's very rich. It's high, high test. It's 7.5% uh, alcohol, and it's a meal in a glass, literally. Sure. And that's why they drank it during Lent. You also brew a Blondbach. Yeah, the Blondbach is, uh, is a very unique beer. We're one of the few breweries in the country that actually brew this year-round. Uh, it's something that I felt was underrepresented. It's hard to find even in Bavaria. Mm -hmm. It's called a Hellebach in German. It's brewed with uh, light roasted malt and caram light roasted caramelized malt. Uh, Bach beers, by definition, have to have an original gravity. That's the pre-fermentation sugar concentration of at least 16%, and that translates to over 7% alcohol. So in this case, it's around 7.3% alcohol. And it's a perfect session beer as well as pairing well with food, too. So, Dan, you mentioned your seasonal program. Tell us a little bit more about that. Well, it starts in the fall with our uh, modern-day uh, fest beer and then goes right into the winter Bach, which is a strong, dark Bach beer. Uh, then followed by our Maybach, which is our spring seasonal, and then goes right into uh, Sommerbrau, which is a Kirsch-style beer. So modern-day Fest beer, what style of beer is that? Well, it's interesting. The history behind the Oktoberfest is that it was a wedding reception for King Ludwig I and Maria Theresa back in the 1800s. They invited the entire population to come celebrate with them, and it was in the middle of October. Now, the good breweries, brewery owners being capitalists, moved it to the end of September purely for financial gain, <laughs> And at the same time, uh, they brewed a different style, which was more bitter and a little lighter in body. And that's what we've replicated with our modern day fest beer. So did they brew the beer specifically for that occasion or? Yes, originally it was just for the Oktoberfest and now they do it at all the different spring festivals and it's a style that's evolved. So Dan, you mentioned Maybach. Tell us a little bit about that one. Well, it's the beer that actually inspired me to become a brewer. Uh, it was developed by the Einbecker Brewery, uh, which is in northern Germany, close to where I went to uh, undergrad studies in, uh, in Göttingen. And uh, the history behind it is a young brewmaster, uh, northern German, which is unusual because Bach beers are traditionally a Bavarian specialty, came up with this style. And it uh, was so great that the actual the Bavarian brewmasters first tried to uh, kidnap the guy to come down to Germany. And they finally they bribed him brought him to Bavaria, and he was able to show them the, uh, the brewing techniques to brew this unusually great, smooth Bach beer. And uh, I believe you mentioned earlier that it was unusual in the sense that uh, most Bach beers were dark, and this was one of the original ones that was a little uh, more reddish in color. So, so they opted to take the high road and just bribe him instead of kidnap him. Yes, they were good Samaritans in that regard. But, but either way, the, the style captured your heart and mind. So delicious. And it's what got you into brewing, as you said. Yep. That's pretty interesting. Dan, thanks so much. Sure. Thanks for having me on.